Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Hey, everybody, welcome back to After the Episode. It's time, 30 miles out. What's going on? All right, today we're talking about this last episode of Tarkland Bayou. Um, I just wanted to mainly focus on the reel that I've been using, uh, this white reel. I've been getting a lot of comments on it, a lot of questions about it. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit, a bit about the reel, the baitcaster, why I use it, why I like it, yada, yada, yada. Also maybe touch a little bit on top water. So what was this reel that I was using? This is the new Lose. Oh, I got it all tangled up in the, oh my goodness. I got it all tangled up in the blinds, y'all. This is my new Lose. Uh, the good folks at Lose sent this one to me. It's the Inshore series. It is a saltwater series. I'll go ahead and put the specs up right now, right here. Boop. There you go. Um, I'm not. I'm not really a spec guy. All I know is if it feels good or not. And I got to tell you, this reel feels great. This is one of my favorite bait casters. It's around the $199 mark. It's super light, super low profile. It's super smooth. This is one of the few bait casters I've ever had that does not backlash at all even throwing into the wind, and I'm not sure no, I know why. If you know why, please comment below. But I feather it the same way. In fact, I feather it a lot less than most of my other uh, bait casters. I do mess with the drum some on all of them to get it to get it right, but for some reason, this thing is just smooth, and I backlash a ton less than any bait caster I've ever had. It's the Inshore Custom by Luz. It's a C175H, I believe, inshore saltwater series. The handles on this thing are super comfy. You have a kind of a grip, grippy material right here, and then there's foam underneath the grippy material. Super low profile, super light, throw it all day long. Now, just in general, why do I like bay casters like on this day in Tarquin Bayou? Well, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. When I throw a spinning rod, I throw it with my right arm, and I throw all day doing this motion. And it's great working baits like that. And I can throw small jigs with a spinning rod. Pfft, love spinning rods. But after a while, sitting in that kayak, you know, shoulders start to get tired. Spinning rod hangs on the bottom. You got to scrunch up your shoulders a little bit. All day, all day. It's nice to set that down. Grab a bait caster. Now I'm working the bait with my left arm and I'm reeling with my right. So it's completely opposite motion of the spinning rod which gives everything a break. Um, another advantage to the baitcaster, like I said before, is that the reel's on top and it's very minimal. So I can actually set it in my lap. I can put it on my knee and work a bait like this, whereas a, a spinning reel hangs down and you have to kind of bring it up. Super comfy. I can set it down on my knee and work the top water all day long like that. Very relaxed position. I love a baitcaster in a kayak. I think bait casters and kayaks go together like meat, potatoes, peanut butter and jelly, Thai and Teresa, Teresa and water burger, ketchup and ice cream, Waffle House and hunger, Spook Juniors and redfish, flies and fly swatters. I don't know, they go together. It just, bait casters and kayaks go together. They just do. All right, the Loose Inshore Series, white reel, love it throwing top water. I guess I need to do another. Teresa did a great video on how to walk the dog. Uh, I have done another one sitting on a dock showing y'all how to do it, and I might do another one. Um, if y'all want me to do more, com comment below on working lures. Typical Spook Junior will catch everything on plant in the Gulf of Mexico, inshore. The bone white, that's just the color of the plastic before they paint it, you know. Bone white, you can't go wrong. There's no plastic. There's no paint to come off. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to give you all a rundown of this reel and my, my perception of it. I do have spider wire 15-pound braid in there for a little more range. I'm, 20 would be fine as well, but uh, I wouldn't go over 20 on this dude. This is my finesse rig. I'm using it on a cane, top waters and broken backs. Top waters and broken backs. There you go. And this rod is a medium rod, so it's got a lot of flex in the tip, which will walk the dog for me, right? Look at that flex. That actually walks the dog for me. You want to really limber wobble when you're walking the dog all day. We were both throwing, I think Dean was throwing a full-size spook. 
-hmm. and I was throwing Spook Juniors. I was throwing uh, the one Nathan gave me, which is kind of a clown color. That's pretty much it. That's awesome. Hey, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the new Lose and Chore series, because it's amazing. Catch you next time right here on 30 Miles Out, Line Cutters, after the episode. What?